What is going on IF Warriors? It's your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about studies that support losing weight or maintaining weight loss is more hormonal than it is calorie based. If you scour the internet you will see that a lot of people simply push a simple math equation of calories in versus calories out that determines weight loss. But although that is a piece of the puzzle, that might not be the biggest piece of the puzzle. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. There are so many different hormonal responses that go on in the body. The cortisol, the antipagnectin, ghrelin, uh, insulin, human growth hormone. There are so many things that are happening in your body that can differentiate you from someone else. So if you notice someone that loses a lot of weight and it's harder for you to lose weight, even if you guys are doing the exact same thing, there might be a hormonal blockage there that's preventing you from losing weight. Everyone's hormonal balance between all the different hormones in your body are different. And those things actually can prevent you from losing weight. For example, if your cortisol level is too high for too long and you have chronic cortisol, it'll trigger insulin to store more fat. And that's the thing that you're trying to burn. So regardless of the calorie intake, it's going to affect you in the long term. One thing that a lot of people tell people who are overweight is that you just simply need to lose weight. It's all willpower, but that is not the case. Some people have to control their hormones before they can actively lose weight or actively maintain weight loss. And this is because genetically you already have predisposed hormonal imbalances. You can control that utilizing intermittent fasting, for example. Consumption of food activates a lot of different hormone responses and lack of physical activity also activates hormone responses. So when someone tells you, hey, you need to work out because it's going to help you burn fat, it's deeper than just helping you burn fat in a caloric base. It's increasing your body's anabolic response uh, to be higher so that you can maintain muscle and burn fat. It's also promoting more insulin sensitivity. So in the long run, those things are helping you lose weight. Just counting calories, if you just sat down and counted calories, but you have all these hormonal things that you need to fix and adjust, isn't going to help you. It's not gonna take you to the next level of weight loss. Utilizing intermittent fasting as well can definitely help you as reducing your consumption in food can help regulate the imbalances with your hormones. One study that clearly shows it is the Biggest Loser study in which 15, I believe, of the 17 participants from the show, five or six years later, were tested and they actually regained their weight. And a lot of them were utilizing the same caloric restriction strategies that were given to them on the show that helped them lose that massive amount of weight. So what is the difference between between them and someone else is mainly hormonal based. Thyroid issues, insulin sensitivity issues, ghrelin. Ghrelin could actually psychologically damage you because it will make you want to eat. It will increase your desires to eat something, carb, sweets, and those kind of sugary foods. So it makes things harder for you if these things are elevated. You want to control them. The more you don't consume you know, those high carbohydrates, high sugar, high processed foods, and the more you don't consume food, period, the more balance you create in your body. So the insulin sensitivity will work in your favor. The ghrelin will work in your favor. The one thing you want to take into account too is your basal metabolic rate. That's different for a lot of people as well. And depending on how severe your caloric restriction is, you can actually have a negative effect on your basal metabolic rate because the hormones in your body literally wants to keep your body at a certain weight. So I'm never really a fan of someone shaming someone into losing weight. And making them feel that they're simply lacking the willpower to do that because of the fact that there are so many different factors at play and all these studies for example the biggest loser study and i'll have the link down in the description these studies are showing that it is more important to focus on the hormonal imbalances than it is to focus on the caloric restriction and also severe caloric restriction although it will still put you at a caloric deficit can mess with your hormonal imbalance which is why people hold on to weight even if their caloric restriction is very, very severe. For example, adiponectin is a very important 
and hormone that you need. It helps with your metabolic and cardiovascular homeostasis, which basically means it's the balance of those biological elements, the positive balance that you need for your body to be running properly. And adioponectin helps you with insulin sensitivity. And those things are increased by elevating insulin sensitivity by the use of intermittent fasting, for example. The links to all of the studies will be down in the description below, but I want to have a conversation started where we're moving away from simply creating a math problem for weight loss because it is bigger than simply the mathematics of calories in versus calories out or the simple mathematics of add and subtract. It's much more than that. Your body is so nuanced. It has so many different elements happening. And that is the reason why you can take two people, they can do the same exact thing, but one person will lack the ability to lose as much weight as the other, or one person will gain more weight than the other or maintain more weight than the other. And the unfortunate truth of this is that some people are born genetically with certain things that actually help them prevent weight gain or assist them in weight loss. But it's our job to educate ourselves as much as we can so that we can counteract any hormonal imbalances that are keeping us from losing weight. Like I said in the past, it was very, very difficult for me to lose weight back in the days. I would take a lot of protein, do all these things and gain weight to try to build muscle. But when it came to trying to lose all that weight to bring it back down, it was nearly impossible for me or very, very slow. Although I was doing caloric restriction, it was very, very slow until I started doing intermittent fasting. Once I utilized intermittent fasting as the vessel to everything for my weight loss and weight maintenance, that's when I started seeing the results. And all these different studies and all these different questions that are arising between uh, calories in versus calories out uh, versus intermittent fasting, that's not the question that we should be asking. It's not calories in versus calories out versus intermittent fasting. It should actually be, is calories in versus calories out more important than the biological hormonal response of your own body? Because the calories in versus calories out system doesn't change, doesn't move, isn't nuanced. It is simply a mathematical equation. That's not gonna change for anyone. That's the same for everyone across the board. What's different or what you need to focus on or what you need to pay more more attention to is your hormonal imbalances because that's what's super nuanced and completely different between every single person. Some people have higher testosterone levels, higher human growth hormone levels, and those things help them build muscle. That's why some people can build muscle much faster than others. It's funny how the world has simply put their hands up and just accepted that some people can build muscle faster than others but when it comes to weight loss when it comes to fat loss that's where the fat shaming always commences or that's when they say well no all you have to do is lower your calorie intake and you will be fine so then why don't you tell that to anybody who's trying to build muscle oh all you have to do is increase your calorie intake and you will look exactly like him because muscle is determined by what you do and the caloric increase that you have in your body it's the caloric reverse of losing weight losing weight is also determined determined by what you do and the caloric reduction. If we're going based on calorie deficiency and calorie surplus model, but the world has accepted that building muscle is different for everybody, but they haven't accepted that losing weight is also different for everybody. And what's unfortunate about that is that all these people that call themselves fitness experts that continue to push that calorie method is the only important thing and lack the understanding that this has no nuance. This is simple. What we need to focus on, what should be more important is the imbalance and your hormones. If we can get that corrected or if we can counteract all the stuff that's preventing us from losing weight, preventing us from being much healthier, then we will definitely be in a better position. So we need to utilize tools that are gonna help us do that. And one of the most powerful tools that help you regulate your hormones in the direction that you need it to go is intermittent fasting. And I wanna thank my patrons from my Patreon and I'm gonna put their names right up here.